Hey there team, so I have a little whiny cat in my arms, so I'm just going to try and hold her while I do the army compositions, if that is at all possible. Probably won't be. Oh, we are back to the mountains, right, I think as per the schedule the last one is actually a mountain pass battle. I'll try and move this battle, don't move my microphone a jazzer bear. I know, okay, so, uh, yeah this is not going to happen, so let's just put her down and hopefully she'll settle. Good girl. Okay, Chick Norris uh, was nice enough to send this one in, and it has been titled Dwarves vs Elves, so I'm quite excited for that. We've got Erebor, uh, so the Highborns of Erebor, that's we've got the General locked in today, Ironfoot Warriors, more Ironfoot Warriors, Ironfoot Pikes here, oh god it's 44,000 frames, uh, then double crossbows, axe throwers there, and actually sorry that's a single crossbow, it's just squished, and then some more crossbows there, actually sorry, no. No, that is a double. That is a double. Obsidian Guard and more Ironfoot Warriors. I like it. Yeah, uh, Hammer Guard there and more Ironfoot Warriors. So yeah, lots and lots of Hammer Guard. Uh, sorry, lots and lots of Ironfoot Warriors. It's good to just throw them into the grinder of a fight. And uh, certainly with the oh, survivability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some elves. Uh, X here. G-O-C-X. Now... He's definitely, well, he's Guardians of Chaos, so he's somebody that's been around for a while, but I don't know what X is. So, we've got the Legion Bodyguard here, and 3rd Legion Infantry, Sons of the Fallen there, Mithril Guard, 3rd Legion Infantry, Sons of the Fallen, again. Uh, then, the Khazad-dum Warriors, alongside some Orc Hunters of khazad -dum. The 1st Legion Pikes, definitely something you want on a sort of siege scenario, which looks like it's a 5v3 here, so I suspect we do have some sort of siege. Iron football warriors of Kazadun. We do have some humans here on the field with the uh, mercenary crossbowman. A very solid idea. Uh, I, I think in any scenario, but certainly in this where you can definitely rely on the enemy coming at you and you can just be shooting over your lines. I'm going to be staying at one time speed because I think that we're going to have the last defender coming on around. Then the warriors of Kazadun here. Uh, speaking of the last defender, zoom, 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 zoom. Ah, his army's nice and laid out for us. We've got Awesome Boss, Death. So as I say, usually I'll just say Awesome because it's quite a mouthful there. The Legion Bodyguard, Orc Hunters of khazad -dum. khazad -dum Reclaimers, Mithril Guard, Sons of the Fallen, and more khazad -dum. Uh, well, sorry, Guards of khazad -dum. Then the First Legion Pikes. I think you'd have to be insane not to take the First Legion Pikes here. Then Hammers of Gundabad. More so, oh, lots and lots of pikes in the form of the sentries, axe guard there, shield guard, a catapult, and some more mercenary crossbows. So there's not too much really you can do with cav. Well, saying that, we could muck about with a bit with cav. We do have the we've got the hammer guard from Erebor, so they can be they can be hitting some people here, there, and everywhere. Now it's going to be interesting what they decide to do here. The last battle that I was on, on the Mountain Pass, was that Rohan versus Dunlin battle. And I sort of defended with my army here, while my two allies defended here. Now that really gives you some good shooting arcs into their backs and so on, but it does allow the enemy to just focus in on two people, or maybe focusing in on one person, and then dealing with the other group afterward. It's, uh, it's got its positives and, neg positives and negatives, I guess, but it'll be cool to see what the defenders do. Oh, come on, boys. It doesn't take that long to deploy. You're going to be having a grace period anyway. Um, I don't see why it's taking them 3,000 frames. Oh, well, I guess I guess Chick, Chick Norris is wanting to like shuffle around so that he's he's perfectly in, in place, but uh, you, when I, I think when you do have quite a while where you're going to be waiting for your ally, you might as well just... Um, just go for it. Oh, well, now we're seeing the Khazadum dwarves over there. Ah, oh, dearie me. Uh, what do we have, anyway? Um, looks like we've got Dorwenian, Imladris. So, yeah, Imladris, Dorwenian. Ooh, what's this? Linden, Lothlorien, and Mirkwood. Holy smokes. If we actually have all the, the elven factions, that's quite cool. Um, yeah, just each individual. That'd be nice. I, I think Dorwenian could be cool. If, if they've gone for a lot of the Alvelin troops, that definitely gives them, you know, a lot of men to fall back on uh, that can kind of take a bit of fire and uh, and just be fodder. Because that's something that an Elven attack really lacks, you know, because it's so tough to get to get some numbers on the front. Now, Mirkwood can take a few numbers. Linden can actually take a few numbers too, of course. But, 
you don't want to do that and they're lightly armored so they really can die pretty quick anyway so in Ladris we have ranch be let's make sure i'm right first we've got in Ladris, we have dorwinian we have uh, zoom, 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 zoom. Linden? Yep, Linden and Lothlorien was next. Doof. Yep, and then the Mirkwood forces. Now, what the heck is going on here? Why have you already... Ooh. Okay. Uh, let's... Let's go to 0 0.1 speed because I don't think we're getting a grace. Um, We might not be. From the looks of it, I don't think we're getting a grace uh they're shuffling around they're not opening fire okay let's let's can let's keep moving as if we are in greece because I, th I like i think that it would be insanity not to why 2k is playing as lothlorien here anyway so he's got his kindred of Celeborn, the karis galadhon guardians very solid oh some staff masters and hey they're effective against armor very low attack value but they're effective against armor uh, the Blade Masters were running by there, Lauren and Warriors, more Staff Masters, more Warriors, Watchers of the Golden Wood, Woodland Protectors, Archers there, and Spearmen. Yes, yeah, so you can see what Y2K is doing here is he's getting out of the way to allow the uh, the third army to pass up. That's what's going on. Hopefully this rain clears as well after the Bloom and Grace period. That'd be really nice if we can just get that done. Blades of the Wood there, no armor upgrade for them. So yeah, there is, I mean, the elves do have some fodder, but it's it's expensive fodder, and it's usually, like, most of it's quite lightly armoured. So Valkyrian is here with Mirkwood, definitely my favourite elven faction to play, definitely not my, eh, I don't know if it's my strongest elven faction, I'm just not very good with elves, but it's my favourite elven faction either way, and a lot of armour upgrades here. So he's got his woodland protectors, Hyriek, now with that sturdy shield and with that armour value, they can take a bloody punch. Uh, which is good, uh, yeah, if he's relying on taking some arrow fire for them. Then the Hirioth, more Hirioth, more Hirioth. As uh, say, the Woodland Protectors, we're going to be getting a lot of them today because both Lothlorien and Mirkwood can take uh, Woodland Protectors. Uh, then the Elders of the Elven King, the Wardens of Amon, like probably my favourite unit uh, in the Mirkwood roster. I don't know, maybe, maybe. Um, Kiri Lang there and Elven King Palace Guard. Again, a lot of armor upgrades that's not cheap but he is going for a freaking elite army now um mirkwood is one of the elven factions that can take a few numbers so the fact that their numbers heavy well, arguably numbers heavy faction has gone uh, very elite is going to be uh, changing this up i think uh, so killian here he's got linden uh, the Mithlon Marines there. Back here, the Mithlon Lancers. Okay, we're going to see... Well, they're Javelins at the end of the day, if nothing else. Noldorin Guard, fantastic. And Marines there. Wardens Velosterian, Forland and Marines, Harland and Infantry. Some Pikes there that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dwarven Pikes, as long as they don't get shot up too badly. Forland and Pikes. And Harland and Infantry, alongside some more Harland and Infantry. Yeah, ooh, Okay. Looks like the boys want to have a little f an opening fight in the open fields. That's pretty cool. Uh, then Dorwinian. Now Dorwinian really needs to bring the numbers because they can. Uh, there's oh Beastie. Uh, has Beastie done this battle? I don't think so. If he ha if he has, I'll put it in the description. If not, then uh, I'll I'll speak to him about it. Um, actually, shit. Was I invited to this battle? I might have been. Uh, <laughs> so well, either way, yeah. Um, Merquindy Pikes there. Then Vineguard. Oh, Swords of Rivendell from Ranch. And Ladris Guardians there, Swords of Rivendell again. Vineguard. And Ladris Sentries, along with some Elder Renway Spears. The Gwethi Muradain with that armor upgrade, good to see. Definitely Dwarf Killers to the core. Godlim Enuar and the Gwethi Arthan. Jesus criminy. And Ladris has got heavy elites. Um, or Quindy Bows there. Yeah, but to sort of make up for that, it does look like we've got the Elven, or sorry, Elvelin infantry coming in uh, to, to make up. Keldron River Patrol there, and some Glade Masters. Sure, okay, so that's us getting started. Well, that's us done with the um, army overviews anyway. I'll probably go over here and then go to two times speed because this is where. Well, Y2K is a smart guy. He's not going to be dumb. And Awesome is going to be great too. So yeah, they, this should happen fine and dandy. You've got a lot of people that just, they're, they're stupid and they'll leave like a javelin unit off fi like on fire at will and just ruin it all. But I think that these guys should be fine. So, and the rain does seem to be clearing a little bit. Hopefully it keeps doing so. Um, immediate thing I'm concerned about. 
is is just a lack of numbers on the attackers um the defenders have those crossbows that can just deal with these these great heavily armored elite units um and they've got i mean they've got axe throwers to mince people too i i i'm a bit scared i'm a bit scared uh but i think that because they've gone more elite that really does allow them to you know they don't have to just sort of slam into a front line and whittle it down they can slam into a front line and actually start breaking through it even the and maybe that's what you want up against like because they're not just fighting humans or orcs here they're fighting dwarves who are on average pretty damn good so you know if you were to bring your elven fodder up against a dwarven mid-tier unit it could be yeah it could could go could go badly so perhaps that's the thinking but i do feel good that there are some avelin guys here who it's sad to say it but definitely are going to be wanting to try to soak up some some crossbow fire <laughs> much rather they go down rather than an imladris guy or oh god any sort of methlond unit here um yeah green was imladris sentries back we need to get some shields up in front of these guys because uh, i think those orc hunters are in range no they've got a slight height advantage but surely they're out of range I would not want to be, yeah, I would not want to have my, my Methylon Pikes that close, though. Just because, yeah, you could end up getting blasted by some nice, accurate Orc Hunters. Orc Hunters quite elven in the way they, they do things. I do like Valkyrian's army. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very cool. It's very nice to see. But I just don't know how effective it's going to be. Uh, yep, he's close. He's, he's close up behind, awesome. But, uh, but no, the guys know what they're doing. They're careful. They're not. Uh, they're playing this right. They're playing this cool. Good, good, good. Always nice when uh, when a grace period goes off properly and nobody uh, nobody screws it up. So what we've got here is the Czech no, or the Erebor dwarves under Czech Norris have garrisoned this hilltop, which I think is good. I think that that's that's the amount of killing that can get done especially if you're planning to fight in this area that's something that's really exciting to me because usually the defenders will just fall back immediately uh the fact they are wanting to fight in this open field means that you can you know you could just shred them uh from these hilltops from all sides uh there's probably gonna end up being a, a unit of maybe orc hunters here maybe even the catapult dotted around somewhere up there and that can uh, that can mess people up so no this could really be a, a nice little killing bowl for the for the dwarves or well killing elves either way zooming back uh what do we have yeah people are just shuffling into position we'll we'll jump back up to six times speed shouldn't be too much longer yeah and it looks like ah damn i, I hadn't seen a raindrop for a while but no they just popped up again i thought we had a i thought we had it red i will have um a time snap in there I, I hope i'll have a time snap in there for when the battle actually gets underway uh which it looks like no we're just shuffling and um, looks like imladris is kind of up front which is i mean good armor generally some shields dotted around but important guys very important guys arguably the most important guys on the field today are those elves and La elves of imladris so now that the uh, the third player's forces are gone, Awesome is inside the defensive position. Uh, Y2K can spread back out. And... No, no. Okay, no, he's just willing to stand right in front of him. Blades of the Wood, really quite close by the Warriors of Khazad-dum. Of course, their heavy armor there, that heavy dwarven armor, even for a low... Well, a mid-tier unit of Khazad-dum is going to be quite sturdy. So I think that they would take that fight against the Blades of the Wood. But uh, if you can, you know, I mean, we see this with this position all the time, where just if you can make the defender just come down, just tease him onto here, you can start shredding his line with, with archers, with uh, javelins. And that's definitely what Y2K is going to try and do. Setting up here, this is really where he'd want to have the fight. Even though he'd have the low ground, it gives his men just the perfect arc to fire over. Whereas X really wants to be having the fight goddamn like here, to be honest. Like, even... Mm, they've got some good shots. Like, say if he had it right on the top of this hill, 
Uh, no, no, the, the Lothlorien backs should be blocking their shots. Still risky. Uh, yeah, Meladris Guardians, of course, have that armor upgrade. It's what you want to do. And actually, the Swords of Rivendell will have their armor upgrades as well. That's nice. Uh, they do look really cool with it. Uh, Imladris is probably the least played el elven faction for me. Actually, no, it's definitely Lothlorien. But then after that, it's Imladris. Which is quite unfortunate, because I know that people do adore Imladris. But I just I just don't, uh, don't do too well with them. It's, I guess it's just their units are too elite for me. And, uh, yeah... That's uh, that's how it be. Uh, I've, I've actually had some good wins with the Maladris, but no, it's uh, just not not really where I feel too comfortable. Elder Emily Spears coming up. I'm just gonna grab a gulp of coffee. Good. Um, I'm not too much of a coffee drinker, but I do want to get some uh, get quite a few games recorded today, so I need to make sure I am nicely caffeinated. And because and I mean that's that's why I like you know since I don't really caffeinate too much uh when i do it does have quite a big effect and it should keep me going quite nicely this is actually the first uh battle that i will have recorded for quite a while now um but by the magic of my scheduling uh this there shouldn't have been a break <laughs> between between videos it should uh it should flow quite nicely um i will still be sticking i i put out that um come on boys it's only 20,000 frames here. Let's get going. Uh, the staff, to be honest, I'd, 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 rate quite, uh, I'd rate those staff masters quite highly in a fight up against those warriors of Kazadum. You know? We'll see. Um, I think that... Uh, I, I, I totally got... Oh, yeah, yeah. I put out that announcement video a while ago about trying to put out more than two videos a week. Okay, so here we are. We have actually started now. And this is a cool... Oh, Damn, some of those boys fired straight up, but the vast majority of them getting some perfect hits in Theon Ladder sentries. That's great. Perfecto. Really, really perfecto. Because uh, that's such a high damage shot. Those guys have absolutely masterwork crossbows um, on those on those horses. So they, they can shred these guys. And yeah, that's not going to be far enough. They can they can lurch forward just a little bit closer. We need to shred these guys with archers. Little marksmen, get them. Get them. You could absolutely rinse some beastie. Um, but yeah. Aye, aye, aye. And what we got there? 58. Those Imladr sentries are so important um, to lose. And Gwaithi Muradain are taking a beating now too. Oh, this is not good. Um, and then the crossbows up here. They are holding. They're holding. I don't know. Was that, was that maybe a little mistake? I don't know. People are... No, they're still firing. Yeah, no, no. I just, I'm scared because everybody's still lined up. Um, you know, I think you need to you need to be getting into battle positions now. What we got going on over here? No, it's still just a stare down. It's still a bit of a stare down. Um, ah, nope. YGK is opening up. What are you targeting here? You going for the art? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going for the Warriors of Khazadim. They do need to get shredded. Um, so it's fair enough. Like... I don't know if I'd be wanting to open up on them when I had like the staff masters nearby. Uh, but I guess if the staff masters come on forward, then he can shoot the staff masters. Yeah, so it's fair enough. Just whittle them down. He's not going to use up too much ammo, I don't suspect. I think Y2K is probably going to only give these Warriors of Khazadum a few volleys and then hold. It's um, it's not a bad idea. Just get them, get them with a little bit of damage before the blades of the wood come in there, just so that your boys have a uh, a better chance. Coming back. Um, yeah, just surrendering this territory here is unfortunate. But if you're not wanting to commit, then you need to you need to just fall back. Oh, what is going on here? What is going on here? Uh, they're getting really close. Beastie! What are you doing? Beastie, come on. Beastie might be AFK. Like that um it's very that is very possible. That he's just uh, he's been AFK. Oh, Basil's run away. He's not he's not too happy about me yelling at Beastie. Um, like sometimes when when you do have a long grace period, it's fine. Just like go make a cup of tea. But you've gotta you've gotta know what's coming. What the hell is going on with this rock? Ay ay ay! Never actually never seen that before. I've, I go on this map all the time. Why have I never spotted this? I don't know. Hey buddy, are those rocks like randomly put? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, 
well, 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 well. Um, yeah, falling back again. Yeah, this has been a very like cost effective. As um, those those mercenary crossbowmen um, are just a solid shout. And he's having to use his godfilm to take them out. Like it's it's worth it. I feel um, you can fight me on that. Sure, I don't care. Um, you know, but I, I think I think it's worth it to just bring down those mercenary crossbows. Just because you don't need to use too much fire. X has still got his. They're a bit they're a bit battered and bloodied. No doubt, but they're they're still around. Crossbows here opening up into the poor four Linden Mar Oh wow, a little lag spike there uh, into the four Linden Marines. But hey, uh, dude, four Linden Marines are kind of made for that. Um, they got a shield, don't have much armor, so yeah, you can hammer them with crossbows. And they've still got all their jabs, you know, as long as they don't have routing. Uh, Merquindy Pikes there, shored up by the Alvelin Vine Guard, but they're trying to push through well not pushing but they're trying to batter their way through shield guard and sons of the fallen along with some warriors of casa doom so that is a very unfortunate mix um we need some ap mythlon pikes are there too yeah if these were if these were merquindy halberds i would be pretty happy about that fight but those poor merquindy pikes are not going to be making much gains or making many gains um and there's nothing really coming in behind them so yeah that attack is going to be just faltering away without they're gonna rack up a few kills oh yeah those wards of casa doom are almost halfway dead those shield guard have taken a few losses definitely not a, a absolutely worthless sacrifice you know by any stretch but yeah it's not getting too much staff masters here good stuff i know they're backing up of course the blades of the wood but yeah i i do oh no staff masters come on i was just talking you up I'm surprised by that. I really would have thought this would be a great fight for the Staff Masters up against the Warriors of Khazad Doom, especially with that little armor upgrade. Gives them even just more defensive skill. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, they've not received that one melee upgrade. Uh, but I would, I would be surprised at that. Yeah, I don't know. Do not know. Um, I really would have thought that those guys would just be tearing through them. But some nicely armor upgraded. Uh, here we are coming in and hopefully that'll be enough to finish the job but still there's a lot ready to uh, to fill in the gaps um, awesome and x just do not want to clog up that position too much because it gives the elves gives the wood elves both both factions there being wood elves um a good opportunity just to hammer shots into um the staff masters once again being a bit victorious there but i think that's more to do with the arrival of the heroic i may do some tests with the staff masters i think i maybe rate them a bit too highly uh as i say lothlorien is my least played elven faction so yeah we've got some up and over elven fire uh, into these mercenary crossbows not something i would recommend apart from that yeah if you were an elf uh, actually oh it's not actually too it's not totally up and over it's actually a decent arc and it's not elves at all. <laughs> it's the it's the humans of Dorwinian firing into the human allies of Khazad Doom. Oh dear me, this is not this is not a human war, but uh, but they're getting involved in it anyway. Uh, is it being a bit of a bloodbath? We we're holding fire with those crossbows up there, but the hammer guard are getting in and out with a good few charges here into the Harland infantry. Percentages are oh down by half at this time but um that's not too bad a situation to be in as an attacker at this stage what we need are spears those hammer guard are free and we've only got shields of revenel and Imladris guardians these are all very tasty charging targets for those hammer guard we need some spears up here aye 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 a hundred guys charge down to 50 40 40 oh god damn i'm surprised they didn't break but that's that uh, Imladris uh, morale for you so no, we need we needed those Elder Elmway Spears up there to, to ward off that Hammer Guard attack. Because they're going to be free to sort of do that again. Because uh, all we've got here are Men at Arms. We need Spears. We need Spears very badly up there. Uh, Orc Hunters standing their ground there. What we got? Axe Guard coming on in now. Okay, good AP smash into the Hiri Ek. But uh, even with the armor upgrade, the armor's not too heavy. They do rely a lot more on their elven defensive skill, especially from being a spearman. So it's, uh, they should shrug that off not too badly. And of course the staff masters will shrug off those attacks, uh, relying very little on their armor and much more on just that huge defensive skill advantage. Lauren and spears ready to come on in after. 
only two attacking factions over here. I like the way that the attackers have done this. It's generally better rather than having a, having a faction split their focus. Just have two full armies attack from one side and have three full armies attack from the other. And um, yeah, this is generally the way that I would do it because there's multiple attack routes to this area. There's only one attack route to the other. If you have one faction kind of splitting his focus in between, it's, it just puts you at a fair bit of risk. And that's not something we want. I do like how kind of spread out and messy this fight is. Yeah, that's quite cool. Just little, little skirmishes inside here with the Harland infantry going toe to toe with the Iron Fist Spears. And a few surviving shield guard battering up against a shield walled uh, Elvelin Vineguard force. Noldoran guard pushing around the side there. Uh, so ground is being taken slowly. The lumbermen are coming forward. I quite like that lumberman up against bloody sons of the fallen. Uh, but hey, they're armor piercing at the end of the day. And river patrol. Ah, this is cool. It's like just the fodder, uh, the fodder men up against these elite dwarves. But because of the types of units that they are, they can actually do some good work. Some stalker fire. Uh, it's it's well, it's it's just trying to kill these guys. It's not trying to rout them. But that, those poison arrows might do it. Mercenaries do not have the best morale. That you'll find, of course. Coming back up this hill. Pike's just waiting their chance. Catapult actually being brought back down to where it might be more useful. Yeah, those Axe Guard. Oh, still quite enjoying that fight, actually. That's surprising. Oh. Yeah, okay, good. We are hitting them. I was worried that, that was friendly fire, but no, this ultra accurate Watcher of the Golden Wood fire is rarely going to be uh, racking up friendly fire hits as it deals with the last few. Axe Guard. Now, there's nothing really... Oh, okay, no. Awesome does have a hell of a lot more troops he can use to fill in that gap, but he just wants to keep them safe and around the side. Still, I would consider moving something up there soon if you want to hold this position, because once those Axe Guard get taken out, um, it's going to take a good sort of, what, at least 40 seconds for this unit of Shield Guard to reach the front line? A lot can happen in those 40 seconds. A lot of ground can be lost. But that might be the plan. Blacklock Engineers coming on forward now. I don't know if we've got a clump ready for them, but, um, you know, hey, yeah, sometimes if you if you wait the full game, uh, trying to find the perfect uh, bunch of enemies, oh, well, to be honest, this would be a pretty tempting shot if you could get in amongst that. All in Ladris guys, all nicely armoured, so exactly what the Blacklocks want. Basil has returned to me now. He's snuggled up on the bed. So he's not been too scared off. Gwethi Arthand falling back. Of course, shooting them in the back with an armor-piercing strike is a great way to deal with them because they do have that monster shield value. So if you try to shoot them in the front, they can shrug that off for a while. Surprised these Noldor and Guard are having so much trouble. Okay, good, no. It's, uh, they were having a bit of trouble with the Ironfoot Warriors, but that's, that's kind of what the Ironfoot Warriors are for here. I'm not expecting to see great kill counts from them. They really are there as the numbers for the Khazadum uh, elites. Or el the Khazadum uh, advanced infantry. They, they're, they're the fodder for them. And they're also the fodder for the Iron Foot Crossbows, who, who have actually moved on at this point. They're no longer hanging around here. Do we have anything left? Oh, I like that. Okay, cool. See, this is definitely something where I screwed up because I kind of, I was like ride or die on my hill. I really should have, once I had seen that the the usefulness of my position was used up, I should have left. And that's what uh, Chick Norris is doing now. He's he's going to be moving on, but some of these units have been deserted now. And uh, what have we got? We've got, an axe, we've got an axe thrower there, and we've got a crossbowman here. And there's nothing around to back them up. So if Ranchby Dressing was a bit more proactive, which... Ah, Coming into their right side here, so those shields are not going to be useful. Um, heavy armor, though. So, yeah, throwing axes is not the best, but still. Um, that's not going to care about your armor value, though. Definitely not going to care about your armor value, though. Somehow, somehow, with all the enemies around, it manages to blast a perfect team kill shot. That's really unfortunate. That was, uh, that was not Awesome's fault. Like, that's just... Yeah, like it was a good unit there. 
Okay, that, that made up for it. That made up for it ten times over. Holy smokes, that's a lot of Gwaithi Meridane smashed. And then, of course, because I saw that I saw the sentries going down, I was like, well, that's really unfortunate. But you see a perfect slam. That's like, whoa. One, two, oh, my god damn. Counting the arms is easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 15, 15. You know, yeah. That's at least like bloody 15 Gwaithi Meridane just smashed out. That is upsetting for the attackers. That really will be demoralizing. Oh, yeah, 26 for 30. So even with that, we are losing percent. Well, we're. we're we're starting to get hit percentage-wise a bit. Uh, it's even it's getting getting worse and worse. So uh, more spears, more wood elven spears, just coming in to grind away at the dwarven front line. They're not going to be killing them quickly, but that's not what they're trying to do. They're just trying to kill them efficiently, which spears can generally do. Sentries are coming up now though, and uh, with no pikes, no pikes from Merkwood, of course, and only one pike unit from Lothlorien, they are going to be struggling to deal with that unless they can shoot them down. We did see the archers have changed their focus, though, to the arriving sentries. Still, oh god, I don't like how much friendly fire we're getting here, Y2K. Okay? Um, seeing that, yeah, that's a burning, I don't know. Uh, woodland protectors are coming up, though. And yeah, Jesus, if you can get a good shot into the sentries, perfection. Uh, yeah, oh man, this is going to be nice. Duff, duff, duff. Mincing them, mincing them. Yeah, so that's that's messy. It's very messy. And uh, the enemy are badly bloodied. Ooh, we've got these five guys. They've still got the crossbows. Yeah, they're all crossbows. They can do uh, do a bit of work. No banner carriers among them. But it's uh, ooh. if they don't regain control of that situation, it's going to be frightening. A lot of ground has been taken here very quickly by Ranch. He's pushed forward his elite units, and he was taking a lot of losses for doing that, though. The Gwaithi Arthand are on their last legs, arguably, and the Elder Runway Spears, they were shaken for a moment as they've been thrown into a unit of Ironfoot Axe Throwers. Now, once those Axe Throwers use up their axes, they're pretty much warriors in melee. That's the thing you love about Ironfoot Axe Throwers and Ironfoot Crossbows. Once they're done, they're frontline infantry. They take out their shields, they take out their axes, they can jump in with the boys. So, um... These very depleted elven units are going to be oh, struggling a bit, but it looks like he's pulling them out and replacing them with Ironfoot Legionnaires. So that's not bad at all. Yeah, okay, those Legionnaires will do an awful lot better. Let's think about getting a screenshot here, and I kind of like the idea of the the gold of the um, the Elder Remway up against the beautiful sort of silver of the elite Erebor Legionnaires. I don't think you can ask for too much better than that when it comes to a, an elf versus dwarf struggle. So good. We'll go for that. I probably should have. I'll name the battle elf versus dwarf and get a get a snapshot of some uh, Elvelin uh, swordsman trying to take down a mercenary crossbowman. <laughs> Just looks a bit strange that. But yeah, and we've also got the wood elves here battling up against the. Uh, ooh, they're now kind of surrounded. I wish. Oh damn! I really. I'll. I don't. Th this this battle was from a while ago, so I don't think Y two K will have the kills for those. Uh, um, staff masters, but I'll maybe I'll try and ask him about them. If we can get some jabs into the uh, into the reclaimers, good stuff. That's that's the perfect target there because they lack that shield, so that armor piercing jab is going to be brutal. Now, of course, they're responding in kind and they're going to be mincing them, but I do often feel that the reclaimers are. Well, I, I definitely know the reclaimers are going to be a lot more useful in melee than the woodland uh, protectors will be, and the woodland protectors still have that uh, that shield. I'm a big fan of renaming the, uh, they were called, what were they, Elders, what, what was it, Woodland Elders or, or um, yeah, I can't remember what they used to be called, uh, but it was something Elders, and it made them sound like an elite unit, and uh, I remember a lot of my friends, you know, when I was sort of introducing them to a forge and we were playing, they would always, they would target the, the Woodland Elders, thinking they were, you know, like the Elders of the Elven King. And uh, and then it was like, no, no, don't shoot at them, shoot at these guys. It's like, but they're elders, they're elite units. No, no, damn it. So Woodland Protectors is a much better uh, name for them for me, I think. Noldorin Guard here battling up against, well, battling alongside the Elder Emily Spears. I like how much the uh, the armies are mixing up here. It's not just kind of like, okay, uh, Imladris, you go off to the right, I'll deal with them here. The boys are really kind of muddling it up, which is, is cool to see. 
Now, just as I was talking about those iron, we've got the iron foot crossbows and the iron foot axe throwers. They're not going to win this fight, but they'll they'll rack up a few kills. They'll tire them out. They'll scratch up their nice shiny golden armor, and um, and they'll you know they'll survive for a good while. They will die standing, as a good dwarf should, and uh, that will allow their allies over here a good bit more time. The words of Elasterian now. Ooh, I saw a few of them looking down from sort of points. Oh no, that was a that was a stopped shot, but um, they were they were pointing straight forward, so that's good to see. Uh, Merquindy stalkers, not too much you can really find here. Those Merquindy pikes totally surrounded now, as the Noldor and Blade Masters are coming in their back. Blacklock engineers, always good to see them getting caught in melee. I suspect they have used up their ammo. Now they're AP with their little hammers, so they'll do some damage to the Blade Masters, but they're they're in a different tier entirely when it comes to their melee skill. When it comes to their overall killing power, the Black Lots certainly do have a bit more of that, but um, only one Blade Master here starting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these five. So, uh, oh god, no, six he's got uh, by himself. How did this battle with the Erebor Legionnaires go? I actually went in the favour of the Legionnaires. Not seeing a mass amount of corpses though, so we either had a rout or we had a we had them pull back. What we had percentage wise. 40 for 45, so the defenders have gone ahead a little bit more now. But they're certainly not in what I would view as like safe percentages. Oh Jesus, they've managed to sort of turn this line. Let's zoom in. Yeah, you can see sort of Instead of, uh, you know, a normal, like, straightforward fight, this has really sort of shifted around now, which is great for the attackers because it means that they get this side shot going on. Um, and I suspect these Greenwood Watchers came on and used their little throwing daggers, and now they've been thrown on into melee, but... Damn, those poor Greenwood Watchers are not doing... They've got a lot of defensive skill, and so those Axe Guard are not going to be, like, the most effective uh, battler against them, but... Um, hmm. What about you guys? Protectors back here. You've got, yeah, you've got your jabs. Okay, okay. Um, oh, God. If they've been, if these guys have sort of gained a bit of their freedom, and they can they can start using up their ammo. Armor upgrade with Huri Lang. I, I love him. I really do like him. Huri Lang are not really a unit that I will use too much as Merkwood. Um, but I don't use Swordmasters all that much anyway, as you guys know. So, but giving them that armor upgrade really does increase their effectiveness quite dramatically. Um, I just caught the sight of these bloody First Legion Pikes again, and the Iron Watch. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. So, defenders still do have a lot of toys to play with, and they've still got ammunition with this catapult. Jesus, many boys. What sort of range? <sighs> Good charge. That happened just, uh, where did that happen? Down here. Oh, those Wardens of Elosterian got a little bit too greedy, and the Hammer Guard came in to punish him. Stalkers from uh, Beastie are trying to chase him down, but they will not win that fight. Not by a long shot. Uh, yeah, and uh, Chick Norris knows that, so he's going to turn around and try and finish them off. So that he can freely start charging. But if these Stalkers hold them in place, oh, Beastie, don't get too greedy. Don't get too greedy. Because you, to, you need to fight together there. Marksman, I worry that we're kind of, we're seeing a lot of humans here. Imladris is kind of... Okay, no, no, I was saying... I was saying Imladris is pretty much dead. They've finished up here now. They've still got a few of the Elder Enway. Um, even Elder Enway archers are better than most units in melee. They've still got the God Hill in. But that's about it. River Patrol have their ammo. These two guys trying to move that rock, I guess. Not sure why. Elvelin infantry. Mm, I don't know, I don't know. Up against a lot of those skilled units that we've got remaining. Glade Masters there. Yeah, Jeebers. It's, it's, it's looking like it's somewhat down to Beastie over here for now. There, There's a lot of Imladris left, and there is a fair bit of Linden too, but it's mainly his uh, his Darwinian guy is going to have to carry it on up here. And up against Erebor Legionnaires, I'm surprised how well these uh, Elvillan infantrymen are doing. I guess they just caught these... Uh, Legionnaires sleeping, and as this fight goes on, those Legionnaires are going to start to gain control over that. What we got? Ah, uh, damn. Oh, no. I thought they received a charge. They're about to. So this is six Hammer Guard coming into 61 Lumbermen. I'm guessing there's going to be 20 left. And I was... I wasn't too far off. I was only five off. God damn. 
what we need to, what you need to do there is give them a counter charge um so that yeah your men are getting minced in the charge but at least good catch good catch killian very good catch indeed that's super absolutely super now the lumber now that they're a spread out unit the unit's gonna start oh no no it's, they're gonna be okay oh well done Jack norris but yeah still that all the same that was a nice catch they're free there and um, they can still four bloody hammer guard can still cause so much damage if he's able to micro the hell out of them um jumping in there now they're in there deep not gonna be too easy to get out jesus christ they're just ripping people apart their um experience will be through the roof right now so each one of those four guys will have like triple gold chevron at this point i suspect uh, which is just going to be buffing their skills more and more and more um it's not a massive aid but it is a little bit now the highborns of erebor come forward we need an elite unit to counteract them or a jab to the face either or oh ouch a lot more catapult fire to come coming on over here what we got some more of these kyriek bashing into the sentries now the old, the best way that we can deal with sentries as these wood elves is to shoot them or throw jabs at them and uh we've been doing that for some time now so how many more jabs do we actually have to give how many more arrows do we have to give uh, still some bows held here watch the golden wood there out of ammo they can get thrown on into melee when we want them here we off saved in the back here alongside some Lorenad warriors good dwarf killers for sure Elders of the Elven King and the Palace Guard. AP, absolute brutal fighters. Uh, with that armor upgrade too, just for a little extra. I like it a lot. Sentries of Kazajim are actually getting broken through here. I guess it's kind of this, this aggressive shunting charge of the uh, off the spearmen that could be doing that. Staffmaster still around. Now we just saw something a bit crazy. What's... No, I thought that was maybe the Iron Watch coming in there for a second. But no, it was just uh, just a lot of fire. What about down here? Ooh, Cabal. Ouch. I thought. We need this Cabal to Ooh, Dragon Slayer's going down from that. The enemy are badly That's not good to see. Lost half their men. Yeah. Um, not, uh, not a needless sacrifice, though, as we definitely did kill a lot more elves with those strikes. River Patrol... If you're going to lose something, yeah, losing river patrol is fair enough. Just try and use up most of their ammo first. Third Legion Infantry, shoot, you know, throw it into their backs. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's a smaller unit. Once that unit routes, it's going to be gone. It's not coming back to the field. So you need to make sure that if it does route, it's used up its ammo first. Which I think it just has. Good. Methyl Marines, they're out too. For Linden Marines, they've still got some stuff. Marquendi Bow's coming on forward. Make sure you don't get friendly fire with those poison arrows. Um, some old Oren Guard. I don't know. I just don't know if we've got the uh, the killing power over here. God Helen, they're, they're, they're going to do all right. And they're still... Oh, good. Fantastic. They're bloodied. They're so bloodied. But there's still 20 Gwaithi Maradain. And there's not... With the exception of the Guards of Khazadim and I guess the Mithril Guard too. Yeah, these two units are really going to be needed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, the Waithi Maradain. Even in their kind of bloodied state. Just either of them, not both. Um, Khazadim Reclaimers, alongside some Hammers of Gundabad. A lot of AP coming in to deal with these Wood Elves. But it's not just AP, it's a lot of heavy damage. So it's, it's not a bad use. That's one general drop, but it's Czech Norris's general, so he's definitely taken most of the uh, the death, as Erebor kind of should in this battle. That's really Erebor's job, uh, to die for the more elite dwarves of Khazadum. So losing your general there is not the end of the world. Sentries of Khazadum are routing off. God Halim just opening up into the Iron Foot Crossbows. I'd maybe... I don't know. I'd maybe want to hold on to that Godhelm fire for the more elite units. Um, but it's no armor piercing fire at the end of the day, so maybe it is just useful to, to take what you can get. Uh, just uh, There's no point in saving your tools if you don't actually think you, you, know, you might not get a chance to use them if you don't use them now. Um, Jav's trying to find a, a path in. I've never really sort of seen this little, you know, this little patch used, so that's a good, uh, good spot. 
Oh, jeez. I don't know how that catapult's been doing. Um, it's been, like, it's definitely racked up more kills than friendly fire, but it has racked up a lot of friendly fire today. Uh, but luckily, those Erebor Legionnaires, they're locked morale, so they don't care. They're going to fight to the end anyway. Alongside the Dragon Slayers of Erebor Uh Elder and we archers needing to come on in now too, but as I say, much better in melee than the vast majority of people. Uh, have we dropped? No, no, we've not dropped that catapult yet. People are just sort of standing around it in a weird way. What are we at? 58 for 69. That's a bit safer now for the defenders. Definitely a bit more of a comfortable position. So we are shooting on through. Oh, the Blade Masters. Yeah, okay. Now that the enemy don't have too much left for their archers, um, those Blade Masters can get thrown on in. Uh, no armor upgrade for the Blade Masters today, but they don't really need it. They've got, uh, they rely much more on the defensive skill. Um, Palace Guards coming forward now. Kindred trying for it, but this isn't how you want to use Kindred. This is just how he's, you know, how he's got to. Um, yeah, you know... He, some of those shots are hitting quite nicely into the Reclaimers, but I'm sure he'd want to be getting some nice uh, normal arcs cracking right into their fronts. Or their backs, preferably. Coming back on here. Oh, um, uh, crossbows. Are we still getting shot by the Gotham? No, Gotham are holding fire. Are they out of ammo? They are. Oh, well, that's still a very messy, with that armor upgrade especially, the very messy unit in melee. Lumbermen coming on forward, uh, trying to sort of take some losses alongside the river patrol. But hell, if those if those lumbermen can get some charges off, they can mince people. But even in just a standard melee, they're doing a lot of damage. This Gwethi Muradin, the rest of his unit has actually been told to route, well, to pull back, but he's uh, he's not doing it. He's going to stick around for a bit. Heavy axe versus heavy ass hammer. Um, this Axe Guard could take this fight, maybe? I don't think so. No. Maybe? Every sort of smack we received, I'm really surprised he's not going down. Because he's so bloody, this Gwethi Uh I can't spend so much time looking at it, I don't want to just turn away now. Oh, he's just falling back from it. God damn. Oh. These Axe Guard getting surrounded now. If the morale of these Lumbermen hold, they can push around and sort of really come in the back, which is what they're trying to do there. I like that a lot. Ah, uh, some axe throwers coming in to stab them though, and the lumbermen have broken. That's a shame. It's just why I don't like um, sort of lower tier shock. Uh, just because, yeah, when you do put them into positions where like they should be effective, they're going to end up routing from it. The only kind of lower tier shock I like. Now, saying this, you might argue they aren't lower tier shock, and I'd accept that. The Rudauer Axemen. Now, that's just because the men of Rudauer are very angry and their morale is very good, so you can mistreat them. Now, these bloody Mithril Guard are coming on around. Do we have anything to throw at them? I don't think we do. Um, Glade Masters, though. If the Glade Masters get a bloody charge on the Mithril Guard, that'd be beautiful. But there's a few little monsters in the way. There's a few of these little iron. F oh, no! They did actually rack up a nice charge there. We even saw a Mithril Guard fall to the ground. Now, I would still have my money on the Mithril Guard to win that fight over a long time, but uh, but that charge has done something good. And with the assessment of the Merquindy Pikes, just provide a bit of resil well rigidity to the fight. That could be really good. But we're all now, the issue here is we're relying on bloody a villain marksman to hold the right flank. And uh, that's not going to be too good. They got to him, squeeze him up, I would say, and have them come in the right. And then... Um, that should be not too bad. Yeah, Glade Masters are kind of struggling there. We've got an admit defeat. Who from? Um, could be Linden, because Linden just doesn't have anything left on the field here. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, we've still got, we've still got the Wood Elves over here. We've still got Dorwinian, and we've still got Ladris. So yeah, no, I've got no, no issue with that admit defeat. It's very upsetting when you do have an admit defeat when it's like, ah, you know, we're still in this. So, uh... Because you really, eh, it's kind of fun to speculate sometimes of like what would have happened had they not retreated, but no, it's, it's, it's not so great. But yeah, admitting defeat when you've got nothing left, yeah, dude, you, no point in just sticking around in the game when you could jump onto a new one and, uh, and you could get another battle done in the night. Good shooting there. That's really nice from the, from the Kindred. 
as uh, the defenders have sort of become the attackers in this side and really coming flying forward because they're out of range units. So if they just sit at the back, they're just letting the Wood Elves use their ammunition. Not super effectively, but they're letting them use the ammunition. So coming forward like this is not a bad idea, but it is allowing the Wood Elves to use their ammunition quite well. And as long as the, uh, the now Elven defenders can hold them back long enough, that will be, uh, that'll be perfect. And they can actually use their ammo quite well. Over here, though, I think that the dwarves will be victorious. It's just a case of what they'll have left after that victory. Um, whoa, Merquindy Pike's broken there. Glade Master's down to five. Bloody Mithril Guard, still 41 Mithril Guard left. God damn, they're powerful. Uh, the Godhalim and the Gwethi Muradin are actually falling back from that fight. I, I understand why this is being done, but I disagree with it. I think that that was really the make or break fight. All that we're doing now is falling back and dragging it out. Now, I don't mean dragging it out in like a, a bad way. I just mean, um, you know, because they can just grab a few units and just chase you away, take everything else and reinforce the other side. Whereas had we been fighting tooth and nail, all of the elite, all of the surviving elite units over here, um, it would have, it could have just killed a lot more, I think. Oh God, especially now if he can just march up with those crossbows and shoot them. That won't be fun. Um, yeah, so Merquindy Bows are still around here. I guess maybe defending the Merquindy Bows. It's just buying time. I get. I. It's. It's always the thing of like what's more important to you, time or kills. But I genuinely think that, that kills would be more important right now because uh, they're doing an okay job at holding this line. And um, if you can just make sure that when the second wave comes in, when the survivors of the East come in. Uh, they've got a few less guys to fight. That's the best thing that you can do for them. Rather than just making sure that the survivors come in a bit later on. Archers there coming forward. Greenwood Watchers. They've been very... They've been held quite nicely. Uh, bloody axe. Oh no. Throwing axes coming into the Wardens of Ammon line. That's not pretty. Um, I see throwing axes are the bane of, uh, of Mirkwood's existence. Got a few battles of like playing as Rudauer up against um, up against Mirkwood, and I I will always say like I prefer javelins to throwing axes just because I I like that armor piercing value rather than the more heavy damage. But up against Mirkwood, yeah, sorry, good, you know like get get rid of the uh, get rid of the troll hunters, uh, grab some axe throwers. Actually, no, never get rid of the troll hunters. I can't cannot part with my troll hunters. <laughs> I just love the heavy shield value and the decent armor of the troll hunters. It's uh, they're just good. Yeah, they're just a fantastic unit. Definitely one of my favorite units in the game. What we got here? Watchers. Why are the watchers sort of shuffling around? You know, you just, uh, yeah, I think you just get good. They are just probably stuck in there. Um, Sons of the Fall. It's a bit of a messy fight. Definitely a bit of a messy fight, but those Sons of the Fall will do quite nicely in there. Guards of Khazad Doom. Now, they'll, they'll do, some, uh, do some good work. Another Sons of the Fall in our left. Reclaimers out of ammo. Yeah, we're seeing the swarm coming up now. Obsidian Guard, Legion Bodyguard, First Legion Pikes. The more Legion Bodyguards. There's uh, there's only one unit of First Legion Pikes remaining, right? Yeah, these are the Mithril Guard. Now they will be hurt. They will have suffered a few a uh, few hit point damage, uh, or a few hit point losses here and there. So they're not going to be too healthy. Godhalim broken and routing there. Uh, what do we still have? Merquindy Bows. Yeah, Merquindy Bows still trying to route off. Yeah, like running away is kind of the only option here now. Just fall back to try and use up your ammo. I get that. But I'll probably just be focusing most of my attention over here now. As we approach the later stages of this battle. Uh, I'm actually... Ooh, I guess it is mainly like the archers now. Wooden Run Protectors in there here. Here we off, but... But the Sons of the Fallen, who are pretty much an elite unit, like a, they're kind of like a softcore elite unit in their own right, uh, alongside the Guards of Khazadun, who are a very elite unit, it's um, it's going to be too messy for, for these Wood Elves. Like, the Watchers of the Golden Wood are great, but they're very much like a hybrid unit. They are an archer, they're not a dedicated melee. Oh, Guardians. Ah, the Guardians, okay. Yeah, this was something that I totally forgot about, in all honesty. And we still have the bloody palace guard, don't we? 
be nice, it'd be great if the Palace Guard could, could rest up a little bit. I think that's what Valkyrian's trying to do. That's my one issue with kind of medieval Total War in comparison to a lot of the more modern Total War games, is just how long it takes your guys to actually rest up. I really wish that it was just like a viable strategy to just pull your guys out, rest them, and then send them back in. But resting your guys takes half an hour. <laughs> You know, I've got I've got guys I'll send in at the start of a battle and then I'll pull them out and they'll be sitting there until like the very last push and then it's like, oh cool, they've gone up like two resting points. So it's just, uh, that that's one thing. If, uh, if I could change that, I, I definitely would. I wouldn't want it to be silly, but like, if I can make the sacrifice to pull a unit out of melee for like 10 minutes, I want him to be properly rested. You know, because that's a that's a big sacrifice. You know, it's it's very um, it's very difficult to do that in most battles. Now the issue is here. It's just as much as I love the guardians, as good as the guardians are, just busting through this sturdy ass armor. That looks gorgeous, doesn't it? The guards of Kazadum alongside the Kazadum reclaimers. Yeah, that's that's really nice because their armor is just this similar gold. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh god. Oops. Uh, I decided for the good of everybody to cut out that sneeze, but I forgot to pause the game, so I think we missed uh, a few hundred frames there. Um, yeah, uh, oh, we, 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 lost, we, we missed uh, the death of about 10 guardians, which is unfortunate. Ooh, good shreddage. Um, sturdy guys, though, like heavy armor of the Sons of the Fallen and great shields. Um, yeah, I really am into this battle. I, I think that this was a really fun one. Um, I will talk about it more at the end, but I, I don't disagree with my initial kind of assertions of, oh god, yeah, the minimap's screwed. It always does that when I when I zoom out and, well, sorry, it always does that when I look like, minimize to go and check on something. Um, but yeah, I don't disagree with my initial sort of assertions of um, maybe a bit of a lack of uh, fodder across the board. Um, I think that, oh goodness, this is quite a push. And now, the thing is, the good thing about a push is you can really gain a lot of ground, you can you get a lot of kills, but you do expose yourself to just death. And uh, when the enemy does have some woodland realm protectors, very, very patient Valkyrian with, uh, with all of his ammunition here. But yeah. Um, saying that but like at the same time i feel like we could jump with more fodder but with the dwarves they've got so many elite units so you, you kind of need elite units to counter that those elite units um maybe what what i maybe i'm i'm saying is i i don't think fodder was really needed um but i think that elite units maybe should have been saved a little bit I think there were there were lots of little goofs and there were a lot of like great plays. Holy shit, that shreds! Yeah, holy smokes! But um, and bloody what's that? Elders of the Elven King fire too. Yeah, um, and so many throwing uh, throwing daggers. Oh my god, that throwing daggers um, from the Watchers. But yeah, I think that uh, yeah, this is this is pushing through now. So they're not going to be able to get too much more throwing. But if these watchers can use up their ammo, then they can get thrown in and they can they can hold them back a little bit longer, um, or a fair bit longer. They're pretty good, good. That's a that's a basically a few you know watchers getting thrown on in there. They can keep them in place for a while. Um, but yeah, distracting myself. Um, maybe had those elite units been saved a little bit, uh, it could have changed things. Uh, though that early play with the mercenary crossbowmen, you know, they, they wiped out like half a unit of sentries and they really damaged that unit of Gwethi Muradain. Um, or they, well, they hit that Gwethi Muradain a little bit. So I think that, that was a good move and that's something that I definitely think the attackers like could have could have countered a lot quicker. Sorry, I'm a bit bashing my microphone there. Um, they, they were a bit slow in dealing with that. Did, the, did that lose them the game? No, sir. Of course not. But um, but yeah, that was that was something that I noticed. Maybe um, did Beastie have much in the way of, like Glade Guard? Like, because I keep I'm talking about like getting more fodder, and then I'm talking about maybe getting rid of the lumberman and trying to get a, a Glade Guard. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Um, as I say, maybe a bit more AP on the front. Now, what, what, I, what I should state is this was always a tough fight for the elves. It's always difficult to defeat multiple dwarven armies on the defense. Um, or, or even if they're attacking you, multiple dwarven armies is very tough to hold back. You know, we often get people making rules in games about, like, you know, only one dwarven army on either either team. You know, and there, there, are, there are reasons for that. Not that I, I necessarily agree with it, but there are reasons for it. So this, this was always going to be a tough fight for the elves, I think. And, um, and yeah, I, I think they did quite well throughout. Um, because I mean, bloody hell, like, we got it up to 80, um, you know, which, it, that's a close battle in my mind. Oh, shit, my man, ouch. Oh, god, oh, god. Bloody Iron Watch. Mints and Elders, I'd probably jump at the melee there. Ah, they're routing, I don't blame them for that, really. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a fair enough goal. But yeah, um, what I would have maybe done myself is given the dwarves the choice of you either you're either allowed a black look or you're you're allowed an iron watch you're not allowed both <laughs> maybe maybe that's something i would have said um i would have maybe taken less archers across the board i think that um just the heavy armor of the dwarven factions uh we probably still oh no there's a few guys that are fighting down here um, maybe it was the sort of the heavy armor across the board that um, just made for a tough, um, tough to really do a lot of damage. Um, but they they brought about as many javelins as they really could have, so it's tough to really think. Um, but I would have definitely, I would have probably tried to get rid of a few arch units. Maybe I wouldn't have taken the Elvellan marksmen uh, for Beastie. What would I have taken instead? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure he had a Hammer Hammerguard. Um, if he didn't, I would have maybe tried to do that. Uh, yeah, letting letting the ham letting the uh, Erebor Hammerguard uh, run free for a bit that did a lot of damage. Like, let's see just how much damage. Um, yeah, good Hammerguard. Yeah, actually, no, sorry, they're down here. Oh, Fred the Bomb, yeah, that's this. I, I like to set my army out like this. I always have my cavalry at the bottom. Yeah, like 549. How much did the Black Locks get? Um, almost 300, but, you know, it's it's messy, but it's not like the end of the world. Like, when you see a standard unit got uh, 214. Um, so, yeah, well played from everybody. Yeah, we knew that the Warriors wouldn't rack up too, much kill, too many kills. 50, to be honest, that's not bad when you're fighting bloody elves, you know? Um... Legionnaires, quite good, quite good. Uh, poor pikemen. Oh, but I guess I guess some of those pikemen were just alive. Yeah, they, they were doing okay. Um, yeah, good, good. So, uh, let's try and finish this before I have to sneeze again. I'm feeling one coming. Uh, I think all the defenders, yeah, really played quite nicely. Awesome really got some unfortunate hits with that catapult. Uh, but he got some gorgeous ones to counteract it too. You know, like that one good smash taking like half of the Gwaithi Maradane. You know, armor upgraded Gwaithi Maradain uh, could have could have changed. You know, like bloody twenty of them really could have changed the game. Um, could it have won? No. As I say, there's just so many of these little moments that I just think like this wouldn't have just having this happen wouldn't have fixed the, the situation entirely, but it would have changed a lot. Um, but no, uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with how everybody did. Uh, yeah, you can see Beastie's army there, just massive. So he, he really did have a lot of fodder, and, and it, it was right for him to do that, so that he could take a beating for his, like, full elven allies. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe a few less, you know, Greenwood Watchers for Valkyrian, but what would he brought instead? I don't know. What, what, what other AP sources does he have? He brought all the javelins he could. Um... He didn't bring any archers, which as I say, I, like Valkyrian's army, the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of fond of it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe maybe bring like the Sindar for like if, you know, the Sindar of the Girdle to, to try and hammer somebody if they, if there was an option for that, uh, you know, for, for these sort of more panicked fall retreats. Um, but I don't know. Maybe... If, if there is something that somebody can think of, like, 
you know, here's what I would have taken. Because uh, I think in terms of battle strategy, I don't think their battle strategy was bad, apart from maybe just trying to save the elite units a little bit, trying to keep them a bit safer. Um, but yeah, um, anyway, a lot of fun. I like this map. I'll I'll see where I want to slot this one in. I'll make sure that we don't have... I'm, I'll make sure it doesn't come immediately after the last mountain pass battle, uh, but I'll see where I want to put it. But uh, thanks for holding through, guys, and I will uh, see you later.